everybody, the Lauren Gnome is here, and it's Friday, and I'm in love. Part 5 of my television show special, and today we're going to take a look at the CW shows that I am watching. Now, of course, the CW is a network television station that, for a little over 15 years, is well known for its programming that is really geared more towards young adults. Shows like Gossip Girl, The Vampire Diaries, dating all the way back to shows like Dawson's Creek. It's really been a station that catered to the young people, but it also had its share of fantasy and action-adventure in a very successful show now like Supernatural, but it also had another successful show, Smallville. Now, if you've been living under a rock for the last 15 years, Smallville was the show that took Clark Kent from his humble beginnings in high school all the way up to when he put on his famous suit that turned him into the DC comic book legend Superman. But since then, there have been two new shows now that are DC comic book oriented, and because of the success of Smallville, these two shows are really surprising me and are very, very good. The first show I want to talk about is Arrow, going into its third season this year. I didn't get quite on the Arrow bandwagon at the beginning. I watched the first episode and really didn't get into it. I found it a little bit slow and a little bit boring, but after time moved on, people were saying to me, how come you're not watching Arrow? It's incredible. So when I got a Netflix account, I powered through the first season, and I really did like it. And luckily, Netflix had the second season a week before the third season premiere, and I managed to have a crazy good break in the middle of my school, for some strange reason, and I managed to watch the entire second season in a span of three days, and I loved it. The third season's very, very strong. It's got a great story, and of course, it's really the cast that sells the show. Stephen Amell, who came out of nowhere, plays Oliver Queen, a.k.a. The Arrow, beautifully. Paul Blackthorne is a guy who I have seen in other TV shows and maybe even some movies. He plays his love interest's father, who is the captain of the Star Darling City Police Department, Katie Cassidy, of course, who plays Laurel Lance, who is eventually going to end up being the Black Canary. She is, believe it or not, one of David Cassidy's relatives. Yeah, isn't that crazy? But alongside that, you also have some other great actors, like newcomer Willa Holland, who plays Oliver's younger sister, Thea, and Emily Bett Rickards, who plays Felicity Smoke, which is Oliver's... Computer Girl. She really is fun. She brings a lot more lightheartedness and comic relief to the show because it can get very dark and it can get very graphic at certain times. It's really a very good show filled with action, not necessarily based directly on comic books stories, but it's got famous heroes and famous villains in the show that a lot of comic book fans know, and this season is very interesting because we have one of the greatest villains in all of DC Comics making his first appearance in the show, and that, of course, is Rachel Ghoul. I don't know what this means for the show. Are we going to maybe get a Batman appearance somewhere down the line? I don't know, but it's really great. And this season, we also have Brandon Routh, who actually played Superman in Superman Returns, playing Dr. Ray Palmer, who, if you are DC comic book fans, know that that is the Atom. But will he be putting on the Atom suit and fighting crime alongside Oliver Queen? Who knows? But for now, Arrow is a wonderful show, and I highly recommend that you watch it if you're a comic book fan and really enjoy superhero stuff. So now let's take a look at not necessarily a spin-off, but a show that premiered this year that is very closely connected to the Arrow, and that is the story of the fastest man alive. Yep, The Flash, one of my favorite DC Comics superheroes, and I was really excited to see this because I actually did know that there was a short-lived season of The Flash back in 1990 starring John Wesley Shipp, who played Barry Allen, who actually plays Barry Allen's father in the show now. I'm really glad that they actually brought him back. And for all of you Gleeks out there, Grant Gustin is the fastest man alive, and he really is a fantastic actor and really flexes his muscles in regards to being a really good superhero, especially since it's a very big fan favorite. It's also got Danielle Panabaker, who I had seen before 
before, but couldn't quite put my finger on where. She was in Yours, Mine, and Ours with Dennis Quaid and Renee Russo, and she was also in Sky High. She plays Caitlin, who works at Star Labs, who is working with Barry Allen on the show. You also have Tom Cavanaugh, who is also a great actor. But the show really is good. It's got a couple of different things that are not necessarily accurate to the comic book, but the origin story of Barry Allen becoming the Flash is great. The suit is pretty cool, and I love the fact that they're really investing some special effects into making some of his members of his rogues gallery. We got one of his most famous supervillains, which is Captain Cold, who was played beautifully by Wentworth Miller, and I absolutely loved the persona and the fact that he really looked like a threatening villain, because a lot of people when it comes to Flash's rogues gallery they kind of look at it as kind of a joke, but he really meant business, and the episode ended on an awesome cliffhanger, which actually introduced another famous face of his rogues gallery, because believe it or not, you may know Batman's backwards and forwards, but if you actually read comics, you probably know the Flash's rogues gallery just as well as you do Batman's, and I would love to see some supervillain showing up in the Flash, like Abracadabra, or The Top, or The Trickster, or Captain Boomerang, there's just so many awesome villains that The Flash has. So, The Flash is a great show. You definitely should watch it. How long these two shows are going to run, I don't know, because I still can't believe that Smallville lasted for ten years. And believe it or not, I didn't watch it, and I'm kind of kicking myself over the fact that I didn't, because now with Man of Steel out and all these great DC comic movies coming out, I'm really excited for this. The only thing I'm upset about is the fact that Warner Brothers announced that The Flash and Green Arrow and the TV world are not going to be in the DC cinematic universe. They wanted to keep it separate, and I don't know why that is. I love what Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is doing with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I think that Stephen Amell and Grant Gustin being in the movies as the Flash and Arrow alongside Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot, and... Henry Cavill, I mean, I think that that would have just been so awesome. Who knows, maybe they'll change their minds, because they still have plenty of time before all of these movies are being released. But that's it, guys. Two great shows. Highly suggest that you watch them. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Actions speak louder than words.